so I've created these rules for the fitty bounce and instead of it just being DRS it is now a three-step system where you determine the proper trade direction and this is the direction you trade in I would see past times where people would be taking trades um, like taking a buy when in reality it should be a sell that they were taking and vice versa so obviously trading in the right direction is really going to help your trading um, because in an uptrend what's better to do buy or sell obviously buy so when we understand the right direction that the market's going to be on that will help our win rate and then we apply our trading strategy to it with further confirmations and then we really get the fitty bounce to work to work really well as a trading system so for the confirmations that I look for they they're listed here um, now the trade direction through recent fib holds and EMAs that that's I think it's pretty straightforward it's like well pink is below purple and the recent fib hold is down we keep selling and whatnot um, now you can have the conflicting trade direction now I basically treat it as trading like it's not I don't think it's like counter trend when you're saying like buying here buying here so, so you could say the pink is below purple shouldn't you look for selling here and that's true but the more important aspect out of these two is the recent fib hold must trade the most recent fib hold direction so here we got a fib hold up are we going to look to sell here when the most recent fib hold was up no we're looking to buy now and so ideally we'd get a break a retest so the break and then the retest we'd be looking to buying here because that's the most recent fib hold direction up well we're looking to trade another fib hold direction up you can see that this pink line had confluence with another fib zone up from here so looking for buys here when it broke and had the most recent fib hold is what we're looking for and in terms of like uh, the EMA's aspect for step one it's like well you're on the right side of the EMA here because you're above it and it's coming down you're looking for buys so you're looking the bounce of the 50 EMA and that's what it did here bounced here so as at now we were on the right side of the EMA to look for buys here it told us we're looking for buys but we can't buy when we're below the pink line so we got to go above it for the retests because we need the rejection we need the right rejection of a line for this to be a trade. We can't just see a little little thing here. Oh, rejection here, rejection here, reje rejection, rejection. You could make up that there's a rejection anywhere, anytime on the chart. So we need the right rejections. Um, so recent fib hold. The right rejection is the recent f the fib on trend. The most recent fib hold. So understanding that and then we look for DRS and then the confirmations and you can put it all together in no time like I can literally look here be like blum this 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 everything's in order like you can really get to uh, to seeing if all these are in order in really no time at all even though if you're looking at this and you're like oh my god this is so much to look for it's not just DRS now it's like all of these things I'm looking at so it's pretty simple like for the MACD, we're looking at the signal line change in color. So let's say, for example, we're just going to buy here. Or actually, let's look at the most recent. Let's let's think as if we're trading this. So price is up, 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 up. We're still looking for buys, so we're not looking to sell this. Buy, buy. Oh, we're looking to buy on this candle, bullish engulfing. But what didn't we get? Signal line change color. So when the signal line can change color it doesn't really have it on the uh, trading view but on for example fusion markets when the signal line is going down it's red and then when it's going up it's green so change color just means like right here change color to red so here at this point in time this candle let me go down you can see that the line's going down it didn't change color change colors when it goes the opposite direction it would change color here so it's not this candle so this wasn't the valid entry this one 
Oh, we got the signal line change color. You can see it's going up here, so that would be the color change. Did it change shade? Oh, well, it went from red. It even it changed color even, so it changed shade. And it did change color, so almost or has changed color you want it to be. Um, you don't want the histogram to be on the first three bars. So... In this case, sometimes it's kind of hard when you're doing these fib holds and it's not clean waves. But like, for example, here, pretend um, we're looking here and we got the cell signal on this third bar here. It wouldn't be valid because it's on the first three bars of that wave. We want this wave to kind of play out. And we're looking to not sell at the start of the wave as momentum's going up. We want to sell as the wave's going down. That's kind of the general theory behind that. Um, so like, I wonder if there's an example I can find. I mean, this one, it didn't play out the best. It would have still been a winner, but if you took this trade here, it was on the first three bars, so it kind of didn't pass that rule, but it came back to your entry anyways. Um, but it, it didn't hit your stop loss, so it still would have been a winner. But again, these rules are just to increase our win rate our probability we're gonna miss trades that are gonna be winners and all that but we're just doing what we can to make the most profitable system and following the rules is how we achieve that um so the macd those are the things line change color we want the right shading we want the right um the like it almost crossing i need to give more examples we'll go through it but this is just basic um the basic trade confirmations video and then we've got v bottoms must stoke cross and be divergent so sometimes on trend trades won't necessarily be divergent like let's pretend this no that's not the good example Mm, that one has divergence. Anyways, V bottoms, like, where's a V bottom? Like this one. This one's kind of a V top. It's kind of an M, but it's kind of a V top mostly here. This one must be a stoke cross. And in this case, we did get the stoke cross here. Anyways, M's and W's sometimes, like this one right here, probably not going to be a stoke cross right here. This fib hold up. Let's look at this. Oh, look, because the first leg is the one that usually does the stoke cross, and sometimes the second leg of the W won't come back enough for it to be oversold. So generally, these M's or and W's and fib holds don't need the stoke cross, but the V bottom trade, the first one, must be the stoke cross. That's what that one means. Um, the TDIs. RSI must be close to the red or crossing. So back to this example of trade. If we look here, let me put a vertical line on that buy. You can see that the green line's coming towards the red line now. If we look at this trade here, that was an example. The green line's kind of going up with the red line. It's not really looking like it's in, like it's crossing. You can see how they're just parallel. Whereas this one, you can see it's actually turning into crossing. Like they're uh, like converging now. So that, or diverging in, inwards. Um, that's an interesting uh, thing I noted. Is that convergence or divergence when you're just talking about normal? <laughs> I don't know. Trading divergence has got me confused. Anyways, um, you can see here those parallel ones. Oh, that trade didn't run. Would have hit stop loss or just got wicked out or something. These ones, you can see it's coming close to or it is crossing. Like, say the next candle was the actual bearish engulfing. Oh, well, it did the cross, so that's good. So you want the TDI's RSI to be close to the red across. Okay, now the candlestick patterns must be a breakout entry with no big wicks on top. So the close, we could see that as price went up there, it was a breakout. It broke up 
from recent high. It made a new high. So that is what I would consider a uh, breakout entry. Like for say here, we're in these down candles. Oh, candle! this candle broke up here. That's a breakout. But So that would be a breakout entry LL when it broke up there. Now, this one, I'm still, I'm a little iffy on, like I really want it to be a breakout entry, but sometimes you'll get a little wick on top and then you're like, crap, should I enter now or should I wait for it to break the high? In that case, I think it depends more so just the overall, how the overall trade's looking and the strength of the close, like how big was the wick on top? I really don't want a big wick on top, so that's mainly what I'm looking for. But we want it to be a breakout as well, or at least like a high chance of it being a breakout. Like if there's a wick up here to the 50% zone, and it's not that big of a wick, but you're like, well, well, for it to be a breakout entry, it has to break that wick, and I don't know. I kind of just consider the breakout as if it has broken out past recent price structures. So see here, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. Oh, it made a new higher low with the close. That's the breakout candle. So that's mostly what I'm looking for there. The RSI can't be below 70 if selling and it can't be above 30 for buying. So that's pretty self-explanatory. If we're looking to sell, we don't want it oversold to high heaven. So here, when it tapped the 30, obviously we're not going to look to keep selling here if it did show more reasons to sell. It's already extended enough. This is one thing we can use to help us find out whether price has kind of gone too far and it's ready for that big, deeper pullback. Um, must have one R profit to the structure or to a line. So for this trade... I used to have it as 2R, now I've got it as 1R because I've seen a lot of the times it would only be 1R and then it would just blow way past. So let's first pretend that, be like, well, it's only 1.5R structure, it's not 2R, it doesn't make my, my old rule. But now the new rule is just 1R, so even if the entry was there and you're only at 1R till structure, that's okay. Um, for example, this this trade here that wasn't valid but let's pretend it was we can see how to the line it's close to a 0.87 I'd say with spread and everything it's not quite so that doesn't pass the rules it's not even a 1R to the line so that's not a rule pass that's that one and then the three minute structure and candlesticks must agree so that's kinda just like the three minute uh, fib hold structure is what I'm talking about. Must be the recent fib hold on the three minute as well. And the three minute um, like EMAs can't be right in the way or the three minute can't be like forming a doji whereas on the one minute it created an ll it's like well you kind of want to wait wait out that three minute candle close to see what the three minutes do because you want the three minute candlestick to agree that's what that um means a lot of the time you're gonna have your one minute entry candlestick close the same minute as a three minute entry candlestick close with a three minute stoke cross those are the ideal trades is when the three minute trade like if you were looking at the fitty bounce as a system to trade as the three minute just by itself sometimes the three minute entry will be the same valid entry as a one minute and those are kind of the golden trades that we want to be taking as well um because the three minute it's a valid trade on the three minute on the higher time frame so that's that's going to bully the one minute and to be an even more winner trade. So that's that. And then obviously we know must trade the most recent fib hold direction. Fib hold up, fib hold up, fib hold up. We're still buying, right? Oh, fib hold down here. We're looking to sell now. Sell, sell, sell. Oh, fib hold up here. 
fib hold up we're looking to buy the break and retest break broke here the retest see now we're looking to buying 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 oh did a fib hold down here kind of well not quite to the 50 but pretty much let's see oh yeah tap the 50 fib hold down we're looking to sell sell that would have been the right wait oh we got a fib hold up now we're looking to buy small break and retest up look right that's kind of what i found the best way to trade direction and then the emas are just mostly what we use for our areas for the rejection hopefully i didn't miss anything um was wasn't too confusing but <sighs> those are the kind of the basic trend rules now maybe i'll i'll go for another example and go through it what do we got okay we got the most recent fib holds we're fib holding down so we're looking to sell it here what about here okay we got the macd we got the change shade it's not the first three the lines curling it hasn't changed shade yet but it is curling so that's what we want we want the curl you can see on the close here oh it is headed down towards the red line that is what we want it's not almost crossing but it's on the way of crossing um we did get the stoke cross on the v top so that mark checks that um so all of these that mark that's right breakout entry oh well it it was a breakout pretty much uh eventually so it's another the one where it's like get in off the close or wait for it to break the low both of them are valid uh the next rsi is that below 70 no we're 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 above 50 so we have a lot of room to move down so that's good one hour profit well there's definitely one hour profit to here um any i missed here nope there's not the big wick on bottom let me mark this out so i can see what it looks like on the three minute now the three minute likely on v bottoms and v tops it's not going to have the the right the right um what's it called it's not gonna have the right candlestick pattern you want because like this doji was forming or not doji but uh pin bar this pin bar was forming might have been good to wait it out till 303 and see what the 303 close was now let's go back on the one minute what does this look like at 303 man why can't it just stay the same you dang nos just stay the same for me why does it do this i should have the three minute up side by side so at 303 it closed down here with the pin bar pin bars we know when you break the low of the pin bar or on because this is a pin bar down when we break the low that's a pin bar sell entry um kind of like how the mes you can have the preemptive entry if you break below the doji doji or pin bars kind of have the same uh characteristic where the breakout direction can be a trade reason but this one passes all my rules so this is a valid sell therefore it's a winner <laughs> this one's even more valid because you got Oh, I guess he didn't actually. I thought the it turned green or red here, but it was still pointing up. This one didn't exactly. It was curling though. You can see how it's curling. That's that's what you want the curl, and then but it was still pointed up away from the red line. So that one's kind of hard to determine if that one passes my rules. It doesn't really doesn't really but it's on trend fib hold down interesting generally they're gonna have the winner trades will have these things lining up like here we got the it's pointed down it's pointed down towards the red 
definitely space. MACD's right. We didn't get a fib hold up, so that's good to keep selling. We chain shade right here on the MACD. It's not the first three, that's valid. So we can see I just determined this trade pretty dang quick. I didn't really I didn't miss anything. It's it's a nice close, no big wicks. Yeah, I don't want to make this video too long. It's 20 minutes long, so this should get you to understand the Fitty Bounce three-step system where we know, are we looking for buys or sells? Okay, we have decent conviction that might be going. Oh, we've confirmed that it is going. We are in. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Now... Hit the charts and look at this and see how it will increase your win rate. Bye-bye.